I am Pastor Nicodemus Mure uh, from the Royal Priesthood family, Boy. I am Sikari Ako. We are going to be bringing you this sermon. And I want to ask us, what happens when prayer is made? And you say to me, what happens when prayer is made? What happens when prayer is made? What happens when prayer is made? Hallelujah. So let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this morning. We praise you and give you all the glory. We are asking that your word will come for the power and the mass conviction. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We praise the Lord and we give you glory. We invite you, dear Holy Spirit, come and take over, take control of each and everything that we do. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's down as we appreciate the Lord Jesus Christ. We also would like to invite our online audience. You are welcome once again. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are expecting that God is going to bless us in this day. And it is a day like we have never had before. What happens when we pray? James chapter 5 and verse 16. Thank you, Bible. James chapter 5 and verse 16. James chapter 5 verse 16. This is what the word of God says there. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Amen. Hallelujah. The prayer of a righteous man is effectual. It is effectual. It is effective. It causes results. That's what they are saying here. It works. Verse 17 goes ahead to say, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven did rain, and the earth bore fruit. Now, Elijah was a man subject to like passions like us. But when he prayed, it stopped raining for three and a half years. Then again, he came back and prayed. And after he prayed, it started raining again. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Elijah was a man of prayer. When it was almost raining after the three, period of three and a half years, in fact, before, when he's being introduced, we are told that he's called Elijah the Tishbite, who stood in the presence of the Lord. If he stood in the presence of the Lord, it submits to us that he was a man that was given to prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When the angel of Gabriel came to Mary, and the angel said, I am Gabriel, who stand in the presence of the Lord. Now, the same thing he said of Elijah in the beginning when he's introduced in first Kings, that he was a man that stood in the presence of the Lord. Elijah the Tishbite that stood in the presence of the Lord. How did he stand? We see his example when it is almost about to rain. He goes on top of the mountain when he does the Elijah Mount Carmel challenge with the prophets of God. Then after, although he had prophetically said that after three and a half years, it was going to rain, he did not wait for it to rain. He started praying about it. He prayed the first time, the second time, telling Gehazi, his servant, to go and check if it was about to rain. And after the seventh time, doing the prayer, then Gehazi comes and says, Ninaona, we could not go, come across your phone. But I see a small cloud, the size of the hand. And Elijah tells him, run, for it is going to rain. Hallelujah. So we know him as a man of prayer. And from his example, we see that prayer is effective. It can work. It can produce results. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We see a man called Peter and John in Acts chapter 3. They are going to the temple at the hour of prayer. They are going to the temple at the hour, the hour of prayer. The hour of prayer. The hour of prayer. Do you have your own hour of prayer? Praise 
the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you have your own hour of prayer? Peter and John are going to the temple in Acts chapter 3 at the hour of prayer. When they are going at the hour of prayer, they find a kiss of a man that was stricken from birth. And they command him. The man expects a money from them. But they say, silver and gold we have none. But in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And the man rises up and walks. He walks into the temple, jumping up and down, happy, singing, dancing, dancing. Praise the Lord. The prayer or the command that Peter and John gave, work. It works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me hear your amen. Hallelujah. So the command works. But they were men of prayer. How many know they were men of prayer? They were going to pray at the hour of prayer. At the hour of prayer. That means they had their own hour of prayer. Do you have your own hour of prayer? For you to be a distant young woman or elderly lady in prayer, there is need for you to set specific time for prayer. Even if the Holy Ghost says, pray without ceasing, but we must also be distinct and say, I have my hour of prayer. I have particular time that I pray. Like Daniel was known for pray three times in a day. Even when they told him that you are going to die, he still opened his window and continued to pray the three times that he was supposed to pray. Do you have your hour of prayer? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we see, as at what we are told in chapter number five, that the prayer is effectual. It works. It is powerful. It causes changes. That when Peter and John pray for the cripples, it works. It causes changes. So when you pray, the prayer works. It causes changes in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to hear a lot of amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hannah prayed in the Old Testament. She might not have been praying out loud. She prayed, but she prayed anyway. And we see the result. The prayer worked. In the name of Jesus. We say the prayer worked. It produced Samuel. One of the finest prophets that ever existed. Hallelujah and glory to God. Hallelujah. So prayer is effectual. It is powerful. It works. If you don't pray, you may be powerless. As it comes to your spiritual life. You must be thorough praying. Whether you are in primary school, whether you are in the high school, whether you are in the university, whether you are not in school, whether you are a housewife, whether you are a husband, whether you work, you must pray because prayer works. It is effectual. It is fervent. It must be fervent. It causes effects. It works. The prayers are answered in the name of Jesus Christ. Sometimes it may stay for a while. It may look like the answers are not coming, but they come at the end. In the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe you will not pray. That's why you don't say amen. Hallelujah. Do you pray? Hallelujah. One man called Solomon prayed. He prayed. He gave an offering. And when he gave an offering, <laughs> the Lord said in Matthew 7, 7, Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you may find. You may find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. So when Solomon gave an offering, God could not break his own principles of giving. Yes. Hallelujah. So when Solomon went to sleep, God had to come to him in the night in the dream. That's first thing number three. And when he comes, he asks him, Ask, what shall I give you? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
You must give, but at the same time you must ask. You must praise, but at the same time you must ask. You must do everything that we do holistically. You must come and serve God. But you can serve Him without asking. You can give without asking. Therefore you must ask. Because when you ask, it is effectual. It is fervent. It is powerful. It is dynamic. It causes miracles to happen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So prayer is effectual. Prayer is active. Prayer works. Especially when it is prayed by the righteous. The word of God says that Mahomet and when you die, you come and you in Jerusalem. But you are born again. You are not a man. You are saved. You are free. You are forgiven. Therefore, you are righteous. And when you pray, like Chen says, it will work. It doesn't matter if you are child. Your prayer will work. Provided you are born again. It doesn't matter if you are elderly. Your prayer will work. It doesn't matter whether you are married or not. Your prayer works. I want you to be charged on the inside. But when you get out of this place, you will pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will pray like never before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer and praise set free some people from prison. Paul and Silas, they were in prison in Acts 16 and verse 25. The Bible says there, and they prayed and praise God. So they combine those two. They pray, they ask, but also they praise God. And as they did that, the foundations of the prison were shaken. And when they were shaken, their, their bones, their chains were removed from them. They were set free. The prison doors were opened. Hallelujah. When you start praying, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I say, I need someone to start praying. I need someone to start praising God with all of their hearts. They must praise. They must pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. When Peter and the apostles were created, what did they do? They retreated, Acts chapter 4, and locked themselves. And they prayed. Uh, they understood that prayer works. It causes changes. The world is run by prayer. One man of God, I think must have been John Wesley, he said, it seems like God will do nothing except we pray. You cannot do without prayer. You must pray. As much as we say that you must read the word of God, read the word of God. And also pray. Christian. You cannot escape praying in the morning. 
You cannot escape rain in the afternoon. You cannot escape rain in the evening. You cannot escape rain all the time. Praise the Lord. Whether you are threatened like Daniel, you must pray. Whether you are threatened like Esther, and you are in danger of dying, because you are going to the king's table without permission, you must pray anyway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me hear another amen. Hallelujah. It is by prayer that we wage war. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is by prayer that we wage warfare. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is by prayer that we wage war. Moses goes on top of the mountain. Him, Aaron, and who? He's there lifting up his hands. And as he lifts up his hands, Joshua and the soldiers are fighting down there. As Moses lifts up his hands, that's a sign of prayer. Praise the Lord. In first Timothy, or second Timothy, I think one and two nine says, I pray that men, I ask that men will lift up holy hands in prayer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now when he's lifting up his hands, Joshua and the team are winning. When he's tired and he puts them down, they start losing. The enemy advances against the social. When he lifts the hand up again, they start conquering. It is by your prayer that you wage warfare. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, some of us have read the verse that says that the spirit prayed within us. We do not know how to pray, but the Spirit prays inside us. And then those people have assumed that because the Spirit prays inside us, then we don't need to rise up and pray. That's a mistake. The Bible says that our Spirit prays in us. So if you sleep in the morning and don't wake up, He can pray inside you. Praise the Lord. It's when you rise up, get out of your bed, and start praying. Then the Spirit prays within you. Hallelujah. We do not know how to pray as we ought to, but the Spirit prays within us. But He doesn't pray when you're sleeping. He prays when you are praying. It is in the praise when you are praying. That's a form of lessons that Christians try to pretend that they are really, the Holy Ghost is working inside them. <laughs> if you can't carry lessons, you must rise up and pray. The point was, it is by, work, it is by prayer that you raise war. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is in the place of prayer that it can be transfigured. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus and the disciples go up the mountain. And as he starts praying, his clothes change. They become white and glistening. White and pure. They watch you pray. The little uncle says, Lord, to change the man up upon her. <laughs> it is in that place of prayer that that kind of a thing happens. Transfiguration. In 1 Corinthians 3 18, the Bible says, From glory to glory we are going. Now we see him as in a form of glass. But then we will see him. As he is. Praise the Lord. Amen. From glory to glory. That glory to glory happens in Christ Jesus. But it continues on as we commune with God. We become more like him as 
as we commune with him, we become, we become like him as we talk with him. Hallelujah. It is in that place that transformation happens. Transformation happens to you. Hallelujah. Some things will drop away and you get some. The color of Christ is imparted in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is in the place of prayer that you cause others to pray. If your friends that don't pray, it is, it is because by yourself you don't pray. Wherever you live, if your neighbors don't pray, maybe you don't pray. When Jesus in Luke 11, one downwards, one disciple came and asked him, Lord, that you teach us how to pray. Why did they ask? They had seen him pray. They had seen the difference. Maybe they had seen his prayer working. And their own was not working. And then finally they go and say, Lord, teach us how to pray. But why did they ask? They saw him pray. So I dare say that if your neighbor is not praying, maybe you're not praying. If your husband is not praying, maybe you're not praying. If your mother is not praying, maybe you're not praying. Maybe, maybe. Praise the Lord. It is time that you rose up and prayed in the name of Jesus Christ. It is time that you lifted up yourself and prayed. Arise and shine in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In that place of prayer, many things happen. The miracle working power is born there. In that place of prayer. It is born there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You cannot convince us enough that you have a quality Christian life and you don't pray. The friends you are, you talk to. So you are friends. You commune with them. This friend is friend in Jesus. If you don't talk to him, you can't convince me that you have a quality relationship with God and you don't pray. There is no way we will run away from prayer as Christians, as young men, as young women, as elderly men, as married men. There is no another time that you need prayer. But now, moving forward, you, you, if you need it yesterday, you will have prayed. You need it today much more. You need it today, tomorrow, much more. And the coming days, I want us to stand up. Hallelujah. Let's rise up, please. If you, let, let, let's, let's, if there is anyone that's watching us and you haven't given your life to Jesus, you need to give your life to Jesus now. It is more urgent now than forever. Uh, than ever before. You need to give your life to Jesus. You need to be born again. John 3, 7 says you must be born again. There is no option about that. It is Jesus that was speaking. So together with these people that are watching us, please lift up your hands and say, Together, Lord Jesus, I come to you. Today, I surrender my life to you. I confess all my sins. Forgive me of everything. Today, I have given my life to you in the name of Jesus. I declare that you came, you suffered for me and died, and that you rose again. And I'm seated at the right hand of the Father. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the King in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Friends, if you made that prayer, please. Reach us out, maybe through the numbers you see down there, or reach your pastor so that they can grow you up. When you're born again, it's just like a child. You need to be grown up. You need to do the things we are saying, like praying, reading the word, going to fellowships, going to church, serving God. Numbers that are running down there, you can give your offering or send it there in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you. Go, go ahead and pray and tell God to make you a man or a woman in prayer. Tell him. I thank you for the young woman. I thank you for every young lady. 
and in every elderly person. I pray for them today that you will anoint them for prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, give us discipline for prayer, like Daniel, like Jesus Christ. Father, we also pray that you cause us to pray all the time, as you say in your life. We ask you that, Father, from now onwards, we will not be lazy concerning the subject. We will actively participate in it, in the name of Jesus. Father, just like we break in and out, we need prayer that much. Therefore, Lord, we ask that we will commune with you, that we will be intimate with you in our prayer times, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. Let's say amen. amen. Now, uh, if you are offering, please, uh, you can get it out. Uh, let's pray for the If you have it, please come on, Sadagaro. Itoe maali nipo, shike kwa mkono wako. Tuwombe, alafu kakuja utoe. So, Father, we thank you for the offerings we are going to give in the name of Jesus. As we give unto you, we pray that you will multiply unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's uh, believe that we stand up and do this service. Hallelujah. God.